People are strange when you're a stranger. Faces are ugly when you're alone. Hey everyone, the lead singer of The Doors, Jim Morrison, poses the question, where's your will to be weird? Well, over here at Cat's Novel Adventures, it's not unusual to be a little strange and quirky from time to time. And in today's video, I'm going to share all the weird stories I read for the week of Weird Readathon. When you're strange, faces come out of the rain. When you're strange, <laughs> the week of Weird was a week long readathon from March 12th through the 19th where you could read weird stories and books. It was hosted by Crystal over at Fiber Artsy as well as Jason at Jason's Weird Reads and I am so excited that I was able to participate because I got to read some short stories which I want to read more of. I got to listen to the fabulous LeVar Burton read a few of these short stories on his podcast, and I got to dive into some authors that I've really been wanting to read for a long time. Octavia Butler, Shirley Jackson, H.P. Lovecraft. Also, I read a Stephen King story, also a Kenneth Yu story, and I also got to read my very first Stephen Graham Jones. For the prompt Old Weird, which was where you read a short story or book between the 1910s and 1970s, I chose the short story Child Finder by Octavia Butler. Octavia Butler was a science fiction writer. This was her first story she ever sold to Harlan Ellison, I believe, and it is included in a novella with another story, and the novella is called Unexpected Stories. She actually wrote this story at the Clarion Writing Workshop, and I liked it, but I felt like it was more of an appetizer than a full course. I felt like it was the beginning of something bigger. It is about a young black woman. She's our protagonist. Her name is Barbara, and she is a telepath. She mentors unskilled children who have the psionic ability. They just haven't been able to harness it or it's been untapped. And she's trying to help them and protect them from a white organization of telepaths who seem to have some nefarious plans for these young children. She has broken away from this organization because she feels like she doesn't want to be a part of whatever their diabolical plan is going to be. So 3.5 stars. It was my first introduction to Octavia Butler and it will not be the last because there are several books of hers on my radar that I want to read in the future. For the prompt of New Weird, you are to read a book or short story published between the 1980s through the present, and I chose a 2013 short story called Afterlife by Stephen King that is in my collection, The Bazaar of Bad Dreams. And it is about an investment banker named Bill Andrews. He worked for Goldman Sachs and he dies. He ends up kind of in a purgatorial waiting room of sorts. He walks through the door of the office of Mr. Harris and Mr. Harris and Bill chat because Bill has apparently been here before and they talk about his past life, his mistakes, things he's not proud of. And Mr. Harris tells him, you must make a decision to walk through one of these two doors. Well, one of the doors is for him to go back and live his life again. The only issue is he can't bring any of his memories with him. 
So he will make those same mistakes and he will still do things that he is not proud of, or he could choose to go through the other door and that other door leads to nothingness. He will cease to exist. He will be gone once and for all. So it's really interesting what he decides, uh, which door he decides to choose. Anyway, I thought it was an interesting story. I liked it. It was four stars for me. And of course, Stephen King is one of my favorites. Actually, my absolute favorite. The next prompt was Out of This World, where you read a short story or book with science fiction elements. I chose I Was a Teenage Space Jockey by Stephen Graham Jones. I listened to it on LeVar Burton Reads. I also listened to Child Finder on LeVar Burton Reads as well. This is a story about a sixth grader whose name is Baby Red. He earns that nickname because his brother plays video games and for the highest score, he typed in Red. So because he is the younger brother, they call him Baby Red. He and his friend Martin happen to be the only Indians and he even mentions, he says, only Indians for two grades in either direction. Well, this causes a little bit of bullying for both of them, especially for Martin, because Martin braids, he puts his long hair in two braids, and so he does get picked on from time to time about that. In fact, there is an incident in the story that happens that's pretty heartbreaking. They decide they're gonna go on Halloween night to the video arcade, and they're going to play some video games, obviously. They run into these three stoner guys. They're older boys. They, of course, are picking on them and humiliate them. And something magical happens after everyone seems to go home for the night and they're the only two in the arcade. Well, they decide they're going to play the game Galaga, which is the video game where Rance, Baby Red's older brother, has the highest score. He doesn't know what happened to his brother Rance. He just feels like maybe he's in some kind of trouble because at the age of 17, he just left. Something weird happens and they have to try to defend Rance's score on Galaga. But it's really nostalgic. I love the characters. I really love the character of Baby Red. It had some heart. I hated the fact that they were picked on by these stoner guys, but I guess in the end it all worked out. However, just hearing the names Centipede, which was my favorite arcade game, Defender, Asteroids, Galaga, it was just so neat, Joust. Uh, you could tell that Stephen Graham Jones spent a great deal of time at a video arcade because just the way he described the setting was very accurate in my opinion. But I gave it five stars. I really enjoyed it and it was wonderful to listen to LeVar Burton read the short story. The next prompt, The Dark, is where you read a short story or book that has supernatural or horror elements and I chose a Shirley Jackson story called The Story We Used to Tell. This was my first Shirley Jackson story and I loved it very, very much. It was a five-star read for me. It is about a woman named Catherine who visits her friend Y, who recently lost her husband. And Catherine visits her at the late husband's mansion. It's a family mansion. They are, you know, talking. Why, of course, is sad and just doesn't seem to be herself, although she's starting to feel a little hopeful that she will be able to, to go on. They come upon a painting that's kind of creepy. It's kind of off-putting to them, and they didn't really care for it. Well, the next day, her friend Y has gone missing, and Catherine is not really sure what has happened. Some people think that perhaps Y has ended her life because she's so distraught over the death of her husband. Catherine does not believe that after the conversation they had the night before. 
Well, she happens to notice something very odd about the painting. It's almost like the painting is a portal to another dimension of the house. And Catherine ends up in the painting with her friend Y. And it is really eerie, really creepy. Oh, I just loved it. It was awesome. I cannot wait to read more Shirley Jackson because I loved this short story. And if it's anything like her other work, I am going to be a happy reader. I also listened to this short story on LeVar Burton Reads, and he did a wonderful job reading it. The next prompt is Flora and Fauna, where you read a weird fiction story featuring nature. I chose Cricket by Kenneth Yu, and it was read by LeVar Burton on LeVar Burton Reads. It is about a family who is waiting for the elderly matriarch to pass away, to die. And she's 108 years old, so she's lived quite a long time because now it's the next generation uh, taking over this role. LeVar Burton kind of described this story as a story of surrender. It's almost like your family dynamics, you don't necessarily get to choose who your family is. And it is about Richard and his wife, Lucy, and they have a young son. They've been taking care of the elderly mother all of these years. And Richard is very resentful of that fact. He is a complainer. He hated the fact that he was tasked with having to take care of the mother because he kind of felt like all of his brothers and sisters were able to go out and live their life. Something magical happens because as the night goes on after they've, you know, they put on like a, like a reception at the home because of the grandmother's death. Everyone has gone home for the evening and they've gone to bed and a cricket appears amongst the pictures of the matriarch. Shows up at the family's breakfast table the next morning and it can talk. And what's so weird about it is the family basically accepts it. The cricket obviously is dispensing some wisdom to each of the family members. Through the Cricket's advice to each of them, Lucy becomes a little less submissive and starts to take joy in some of the duties that she always kind of felt like she was second best, like as far as cooking, perhaps. The Cricket brings lots of joy to the little boy and to Richard, she makes him very angry because Richard just pities himself. He is full of pride. He just has a really funky attitude and he does not like what the cricket has to say. I really enjoyed this story. It was a four star for me. It has a lot of messages in it. Pretty much, if you're gonna feel sorry for yourself and you're gonna complain all the time, Nobody cares. Nobody's gonna feel sorry for you. Your life is gonna seem funky if you continue to not look at your blessings. So I really enjoyed the story. It's not the first one I've read by Kenneth Yu and probably will not be the last because I really do enjoy his writing. I read an additional story for the Week of Weird and it's called The Color Out of Space by H.P. Lovecraft. It was published in 1927 and has all of the elements for Week of Weird, except that it's not a new weird story. However, I went and bought myself a new book that has some H.P. Lovecraft stories in it. It is by the Flame Tree Publishing Group that I got my Brothers Grimm and Edgar Allan Poe book. It's so nice. It's called Gothic Fantasy Lovecraft Mythos New and Classic Collection. Isn't that 
such a pretty cover. I love it. Anyway, I know I have an HP Lovecraft book somewhere in the house. I think it's packed away. I think I packed it away when I gave one of my bookcases to Andrew for him to put all of his manga on because I couldn't find it. So I went ahead and went to Books A Million when I knew that I was going to be participating in this readathon and I got this book so I could have this short story, The Color Out of Space. Anyway, let's get to what the story is all about. It was scary. It's ominous. There's a lot of dread in it. There is an alien entity that comes to Earth in a form of a meteorite, and it lands in the hills of this fictional town called Arkham in Massachusetts, near a farm owned by a farmer named Nahum, I believe. A surveyor comes to town to find out what has taken place here because this area is pretty barren. Nothing grows there after this meteorite dropped there. And no one wants to talk to him because it doesn't have very pleasant memories for anyone until the surveyor comes across Ami Pierce, who happened to be friends with Nahum and his family. And he tells them the story of what happens to Nahum and his farm when this meteorite comes to town. It was very good. H.P. Lovecraft writes descriptively. He has a way of building tension and causing dread or you to feel dread. I just thought it was super creepy and the only thing that I have any point of reference with this short story is I happened to see the movie that starred Nicolas Cage and that was crazy and creepy and the things that happened to the family are dreadful. I would highly recommend if you've read the short story that you visit the movie especially if you want to see Nick Cage loses shit because that's basically what ends up happening after this meteorite lands near their home. I loved it. I gave it five stars and I do think that I will be reading some more HP Lovecraft in the future. I really enjoyed participating in the Week of Weird Readathon. Thanks so much, Crystal and Jason, for hosting such a joyfully weird week of reading. I loved everything I read from telepaths to a talking cricket, the afterlife to a creepy painting to a magical arcade game and a sentient life force that came from space. It was a wonderful week of weird. Thanks so much everyone for watching. If you participated in the week of weird, what did you read? Leave me some comments below. I really would like to know what you read in case I'd be interested in reading your weird stories. In the meantime, stay amazing and be adventurous. Oh, and be weird from time to time.